What's going on guys? My name is Brian, also known as that journaling guy, and welcome back to another video today. So in today's video, um, it's kind of a mixed vlog and tips video, okay? Because I went to my first pen show last year. I went to the DC pen show, which is supposed to be like the DC super, super pen show. Like it's the biggest pen show that there is. And since then, I've only gone to another pen show, which was the Philadelphia pen show. But I have all this footage and stuff that I wanted to share with you guys. And while doing that, I thought it would be a good idea to share some things that I wish I knew before I went to my first pen show. Because there's some great videos out there, okay? And I did my research and like I looked all over the place and I, you know, during my chat on Twitch, like I asked them what to expect when going to my first pen show and everything. But there were some things that I feel like people didn't really stress enough or didn't even mention, right? So I am here to give you those few tips and hopefully kind of give you a better idea of what you could see at your first pen show. Now down below, I'm going to link two videos that were really good like tips for your first pen show or for pen shows in general that I thought did a really good job of going through everything. And that's Mike's video and then Fig Boot on pens. And I thought they were really good introductions on like what you should bring, what you should expect and things like that. And they were the videos I watched and they are great people, they're great videos. Go check it out. So last year in 2021, my first pen show that I ever went to was the DC Super Show. And if you don't know what the DC Super Show is, it's essentially the biggest pen show in the world. Okay, and that's where I decided to, to go take my first show. I was like, you know what? Yeah, it's close to me. I live on the East Coast of the States. So I just happened to, to, to connect, you know, I had plans for it. I was like, you know, my first pen show, boom, let's go big. Okay, now I'm telling you that because my experience um, at that show might be a little bit different and what happened to me might be a little bit different than what you're going to experience at the smaller shows. So, you know, take these, all, all these tips with a little um, hint of lime. No, with a little grain of salt. <laughs> That's not the saying. I'm going to start saying hint of lime because I love lime. So that is going to be the saying that we say when I don't, when we take everything with a grain of salt. Okay. It's hint of lime from now on. Anyway, these are a few tips um, that I think could better prepare you for what you can expect going to one of these pen shows. All right. Again, our experiences could be vastly different. It all depends on like what kind of person you are, what you're going to these shows to do, and if you've been to one or not before. But if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you probably haven't been to one. So, uh, you know, you wouldn't be watching this video if you've already been to a pen show, unless you have, and then you, you know, maybe you're, there's some tips you want to include. I don't know. But let's go over a few tips that I want to share with you guys, okay? So tip number one, um, and this might be because, you know, I went to the biggest pen show in the world, you're going to experience sensory overload, okay? Whether it be the amount of people, the amount of pens, the amount of tables, the space, it's inevitable. You will become overwhelmed if you've never been to a pen show before, okay? There's just a lot, a lot to take in when you visit one of these places. And my my tip for you is if you can go, right, if you could afford to go on the trader days, I think I would recommend you going on the trader days over the public like trading days because it is just going to be a much better and more intimate experience with the pen dealers and the pen vendors like significantly better because when you go on the public trading days which is I believe is Saturday and Sundays at most pen shows expect to see a good amount of people you're going to be seeing you know feet everywhere going to be looking down you're going to be bumping shoulders with everybody and the trouble with going on those days when everybody's there and you're overwhelmed and stuff, you might not get that one on one experience with the vendors that you more likely would get on one of the other like trader days. So my tip to you is try to go on one of the less busy days if you can afford it. I think it would be a much better experience for your pen show overall if you can do that. Number two, my second tip for you, and I know it's in these videos and people mention it all the time, but I don't think people really, really, really stress it enough. And that is to make a plan. Okay. You have to make a plan in the sense that like, 
you want to you want to have an idea of what you're looking for like do your research don't be lazy right because what i ended up doing for my first pen show i didn't i was just very new to collecting um especially you know this is from a perspective of a very new collector you don't know exactly what you like or what you don't like you don't know what brands you prefer you don't know what you're looking for necessarily so making a plan for something that you don't know you want is difficult right so my tip to you is to do your research right do your research look up videos see ink swatches look at different brands look at pen reviews so you can make a list of pens that you want to try or inks that you want to swatch or pen cases that you want to see or pen vendors that you want to talk to pen people that you want to meet it's going to take a little bit of effort from your side, but I think you're going to have a much better experience if you go in doing these things than just winging it like I did, because I was like, ah, I'll get there, you know, I'll see everything and I'll make a plan based on that. And I felt a little discombobulated. OK, because like I said, it could be very overwhelming. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of pens. I'm like, I don't know what to look for. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. OK, and that's nobody's fault but my own. Right. So I'm telling you, make the plan so that you're better prepared and so that your experience is a little more organized and a little more thought out. So you can think more about like enjoying things than just randomly stumbling your way through the show, which if you want to do, that's perfectly fine. Right. But I think there are better ways to go about it. Right. My third tip that I don't I don't think anybody talks about enough when talking about pen shows is the following don't expect to find cheaper prices on pens at these pen shows okay because that was that was the assumption that i made when going to my first pen show i was like oh you know i assume you could like get way discounted prices on your fountain pens etc 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 that was my assumption when i went to my first pen show i was like oh i'm gonna find great deals here and like these are gonna be so like you know i went into it thinking it was a flea market it is absolutely not like a flea market at all okay it is a pen show and these are reputable like pen dealers who are able to sell like your favorite pen brands but they're more than likely going to sell it at market value what you can find online so the good thing okay the good thing about this is you're not going to find the pens being extremely expensive right like the prices aren't going to be like hiked up because it's just the pen show but you know what you're looking through online is probably where you're going to find at the show okay now the one place where i feel like you can strike a lot of good deals and find um, very good pricing is going to be with the vintage pens or used pens. So the more modern pens, you're not going to be able to get a deal. I'm gonna be honest, like haggling maybe a few dollars off if you're lucky and if they're not very overwhelmed because what you won't buy, somebody else will like immediately, you understand? So I think with the vintage pen market and moderately used pens i think you can get a really good deal you just gotta talk to people which brings me to my next tip okay these shows usually have a crap ton of vintage pens like there's a lot of vintage pens that are sold at these shows right and that kind of disappointed me being a new pen collector for the sole reason that i didn't know anything about vintage pens okay i still not very knowledgeable on vintage pens so when i'm looking at these older pens i don't know what i'm looking for i don't know the quality like what what brands have really good quality what pens are you know are going to last longer you know have good longevity i i knew nothing and if there's something that i wish i would have done a little more research on it would be vintage pen brands or vintage pens to look for right because i'm sure you could have found a great deal and the thing about these pen shows is a lot of the pen vendors are pen collectors just like you and me right they're not necessarily like they don't necessarily have a store they're just pen collectors who are selling stuff from their collection and they've bought out a table at the show and they'll bring pens like older pens sometimes newer pens but there are a lot a lot a lot a lot of vintage pens which can become overwhelming and frankly if you're not familiar with the vintage pen like market you might not look twice at them right but i feel like you could find some really great hidden gems if you know what you're looking for so put a little effort into looking up vintage pens all right vintage pen brands actual pens maybe look for some vendors 
Um, and I think you'll have a little bit of a better experience than I did because I ended up kind of just ignoring the vintage pen section simply because I didn't know what I was looking for and I wasn't willing to spend money on something that I didn't know was going to be worth it. My next tip is a pen show is not just for shopping, okay? Like, um, think of it, all right? Think of a pen show kind of like a gigantic pen museum. Okay, this also goes along preparing a list of pens and stuff that you want to see. Think of it like a giant pen museum. You are going to see a gazillion pens, right? A bajillion pens, a, a quadrillion pens of very high quality, high prices that you otherwise wouldn't ever get the chance to handle. So, you, you know, you this is your opportunity to write with them, to handle them, to see how you feel, to see if they're something that you might like, right? Think of it like a pen museum, right? You get to, to hang out with all these people and see all these things that you normally wouldn't get to see. So take that in, experience that. Ask the vendors, hey, can I, can I see this pen? Hey, can I write this pen? Is this inked? Give it a try, okay? Don't be shy. Let them know that it's something you're interested in, right? And we'll get to a few more tips above that, like after that, but play with them. And I mean, obviously these guys are pen sellers, right? Like they're here to make money. They're here to sell pens. So don't actually treat it like a museum, but don't be afraid to ask them if you want to handle the pens, see them, experience them because there's something so nice about experiencing a pen that you've only seen online and you're like would this be a good pen for me i don't know do i want to spend 300 dollars and find out probably not so this is your chance to give it a try and decide whether that pen is for you or not okay next tip is and this one is is just a i don't know if it's an etiquette tip or just like my general advice to you because a lot of people have told me what you're going to see at these pen shows is that they will have these tables with ink samples, right? A bunch of ink samples and a bunch of ink brands, okay? What I'm going to tell you is do not stick your pen into these bottles. Do not fill your pen with these ink samples. You don't know where they have been. You don't know if they've been cross-contaminated. You don't know how long they've been open. You don't know if they're molded on the inside. You don't know what kind of damage they can do to your pen, especially if it's un like if they're unopened and dust gets inside. You're just asking for a bad time if you're going to ink your pens with the ink samples. Don't do it. Instead, bring a little notebook, okay? And they usually have like some kind of glass quill or some kind of pen at the desk that allows you to swatch the ink so you know how it acts and how it looks on your notebook. But do not put your own pens in it if you care for your pen collection at all. I've already heard horror stories of what happens when people fill their pens with these ink samples. It's very tempting, don't get me wrong. I understand. I wanted to do it too, but just don't do it, okay? It's you're not you're not you're asking for a bad time if you do that. Okay? I'm looking at you. Remember me telling you this. If you do it, rest in peace to your pen. Don't don't talk to me about it. The next tip is uh -uh. you will become desensitized to pens. All right, that is is not a um like it's an inevitability. You will become desensitized. It's not a matter of will it happen. It's a matter of when. Okay, there are just so many pens, and the the tip is you do take your breaks right like frequently. What I ended up doing at the pen show was I would make around the floor, take like a 15 minute break, go back around, take a 15 minute break and go back around. And the thing is you want to take these breaks because what ends up happening is everything just becomes a blur, right? Pens just start looking like pens. Vendors all start looking like they have the same pens. You just get like this tunnel vision and everything starts looking way too similar. You have to take a break. Okay, go sit down, drink some water, bring some snacks, whatever you have to do, go talk to some other people and make your rounds. You don't have to take in everything at once, which is hard not to do, but take it slow, appreciate each pen and go away. Just go away. Okay, don't spend your whole time on the floor. Go away and come back because that was a very real thing towards, I want to say towards like my third round, even then it was, it had already been a few hours. I want to say maybe like three hours everything was just starting to mesh together. And I was like, all right, yeah, I think I might need a longer break because Jesus, Ed, you know, I, I really couldn't distinguish <laughs> pens from pens anymore. So you're gonna become desensitized and just make sure you take your breaks, okay? The next tip is, 
And these are gonna go hand in hand. Make a budget, a realistic budget for you, what you're willing to spend and bring cash, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why they go hand in hand. Making a budget is very important because you will so easily, you know, justify your purchases of being then and there. You're gonna see these beautiful, beautiful pens that you have never seen before. And then they're going to be these like very extreme prices or very out of your budget prices, but you're gonna justify them because you're there. You're like, I can do this, right? I can, I can buy this right here, right now. And then you have no money for the rest of the show. Right. You don't want that to happen. You want to plan a little bit better, but it's so easy to do that. I was I remember I had set my budget to around three hundred dollars because that's a budget that was comfortable for me. And that's what I was willing to spend at the show. And right off the bat, I saw this beautiful pink like wood inlay pen and it was about like two hundred eighty dollars. That would have been my budget right there. And I was like, oh, my God, I just I want it right now. Right. Like I want this right now. But I had to talk myself out of like buying the pen right then and there because I didn't want to blow through my budget without even experiencing the entire show, right? And I'm telling you to bring cash because a lot of vendors still don't take like your credit card or debit card. There are a lot of vendors who still deal in cash and the two go hand in hand because if you're able to just carry cash and leave your card at home, you kind of just have the money that's in your pocket, right? Like just keep it to that, keep every other form of payment at home, delete Apple Pay from your phone, whatever you have to do, just keep the cash in your pocket and that is what you're allowed to spend at the show. I thought that was a really good tip, something I stuck to and something that definitely helped me stay on track. I can't say the same for New York because I had my card and I went way over budget and it was a disaster, but cash, cash, cash is king. Definitely bring cash and make a budget that you can stick to. A lot of times you won't stick to it, but try to stick as closely to it as you can. Okay, it is so easy to just impulsively buy shit at these shows because you're it's so gorgeous and they're beautiful and you're just like, I, I want it. I need this now. You know, I promise. Handle it. If you still want in two weeks, buy it. You're good. I'm talking from the perspective of somebody who impulsively buys a lot of shit that they don't need. Okay, I'm working on it. It's a habit I'm trying to break, but I'm telling you, it's one of those things like, hey, if you want it in two weeks from when you first wanted it, then buy it, right? I sometimes I'll be on Amazon at like 3 a.m. and I'll be like, hey, that's a really cool, um, you know, bidet. Bye. You know what I'm saying? So take care of yourself. The next tip that I'm going to talk to you is, and this is something that I think a lot of people will deal with in different hobbies and careers, is imposter syndrome. Okay. Imposter syndrome is a very real thing when going through to one of these pen shows because it's very easy to feel scared or intimidated by people you know probably know more than you or have bigger collections and way more experience and i'm here to tell you that yes they probably do and that is perfectly okay that is the point right you want to meet people who know more than you in these things you want to meet people who have stuff in their collection that you don't ask questions that's one of the coolest things about this show is that everybody was so nice i don't have complaints like the general pen enthusiast i'm sure you know minus a few um were very nice like pen people the people who appreciate the hobby are so willing to talk about pens and they're so willing to educate you about anything that they they have to offer that all you have to do is just ask, right? Because very easily, I when I went to this show, I was like, I don't really belong here. I don't know enough, right? I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't even know what questions to ask. It's easy to feel like you don't belong in that crowd, but I'm telling you, you do. It's okay. Like, it's okay to not know things, okay? It's okay to ask questions. Ask people to try out their pens. Ask people what's so special about this pen ask people where they bought pens, ask them anything that you can think of because genuinely they will respond with a very enthusiastic manner. And it just gets you very excited. It gets you very excited about like with the possibilities of pens. It gets you excited to, to really engage other people within this hobby, but don't be afraid to just ask. Um, alongside that, my next tip for you is even if you're not a vendor, even if you're not a social media like pen person, um, wear a name tag. 
okay and wearing it i wish i had worn a name tag to really make a better connection with people because now with masks uh, it's hard to recognize other people that you would you know frequently see at these shows right uh, I think wearing a name tag would have made making friends a lot easier, um, people recognizing you a lot easier. And if it's a place where you want to go to meet people, to make friends, to, you know, experience that social side of the pen show, wearing a name tag is one of the best tips that I can give you. I wish I had done it. I didn't do it my first time. So I think it is a really important tip. So those were some things I wish I had known before going to my first pen show um, that I felt like nobody really talked about enough in their in their like tips for their shows. Uh, hopefully they're helpful to you. Let me know if you have any other comments for newbies that you felt like nobody's really talked about down in the comments below. Let them know what they should be expecting or some quick little tips that have really helped you that you feel like nobody's really covered. Leave that down below. I want this to be a resource for people to use. So I hope you guys like that video. I had a great time at the at the DC Super Show. I will be going again this year. I'm trying to go to way more pen shows, but unfortunately, some of them are way out of my way and my schedule sometimes doesn't line up, but I'm going to try my best. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. How many times can I say so? Fuck. So, so, so. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at that journaling guy where I post a lot of my personal spreads and fun little reels and stuff that you guys aren't going to see anywhere else. So make sure to follow me there. I also like to live stream on Twitch slash that journaling guy. So make sure to give me a follow there. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace.